Okay. All right. I think that I might have... I don't know what that was. I, I think maybe it was because I got that phone call in the middle of the show. Or I answered the phone call in the middle of the show. Okay. I think I might have... Okay. Is this better? Can you guys hear me now? I think you can hear me and I'm not breaking up anymore. I don't know what that was. I think it might have been because I answered that phone call in the middle of the live. Um, you know, these phones are temperamental. So, anyway, hi guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, I see Miss Devin, Tiger Lover. Um, those are the only names that I saw offhand. But, um... Thank you guys for joining us. Have you missed me? I um I think because I miss hot topic, I'm gonna call all of my viewers and listeners my hotties. You guys wanna be my hotties? Is that bad? Okay. <laughs> so anyway, um you excited? Yes, yes, yes. So tonight I think what we're gonna talk about. Um, I know the time changed just a little bit, but it's just a half an hour. So I figured that you guys, uh, I posted it early enough and you guys will survive with, um, me being just a little half an hour later than, um, we used to do the shows. Where have you been? New show, new time slot. <laughs> I have been, you know what? I've honestly been chilling, Tiger Lover. I have been, uh, you know, those, there were a lot of shows we were doing three times a week, was it? <clears throat> yep. Um, and I didn't realize how much that was wearing me out until I didn't have to do it. So, um, you know, <laughs> y'all know Brian, uh, the hubs, he's not going to always be here because his job won't let him be great. But whenever he's here, he's going to join us on the show. Um, yeah, you know, uh, we, we, Paul and I just decided to, to part ways, um, and let him do his thing and he's going to let me do my thing and. So that's all. That's it. Um, she said, hey, cuz. <laughs> so that's it. You know, sometimes, you know, you got to spread your wings a little bit and you got to let other people spread their wings. And um, that's pretty much, you know, what, 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 what we did in the meantime. No clip wings around this joint. <laughs> More to love. Hello. I see that you joined. Uh, in the meantime. I was getting my mind right, and um, I'm here. And you're here, and I'm glad that you guys are here. Tonight, 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 we are going to talk about um, because yeah. that threw me off. <laughs> what? Why are you saying yeah? That threw me off. Okay, tonight we're going to talk about, I saw something um, on, hey, Miss, Miss, I believe Miss Mickey, curvy girl. So listen, guys, I'm going to just tell you, thank you, more to love. I'm going to just tell y'all, I've been to the eye doctor this week. And every time I go to the eye doctor, it's like every time I go to the dentist, I feel like they always find something else wrong. So anyway, they changed my prescription in my glasses and they had to keep my frames because I wasn't paying $300 for another pair of frames because I don't even like wearing them anyway. So I might as well wear the ones I like anyway. Um, they keep they have to keep my frames for a week. So I don't have my glasses and my contacts don't work as well as my glasses because I have an astigmatism in one of my eyes. So whatever. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of this, trying to see y'all comments. <laughs> but, um, <coughs> oh no, we have Brian's phone. We'll look at the comments on too. I'm also live on Facebook right now. So I'm... I'm... <laughs> I had to pull that for I was going to say something. I had to pull it back. <laughs> I'm also live on Facebook right now. So I'm trying to figure out if I have the ability to multitask. Okay? Um, and also when I went to the eye doctor, y'all, do y'all see, can y'all see these little marks on my face, on my eye? Have you ever noticed them? Anyway, they're cysts. I thought I was going to call Dr. Pimple Popper. And, you know, Dr. Pimple Popper was going to cure me. But I went to the eye doctor and the eye doctor did like a little, like a minor surgery because he didn't put me to sleep. But I did get like three needles in my eye mm. and two over here and some numbing stuff. And, mm. you know, they kind of use a scalpel to remove them. So one of my eyes 
is recovering. He's doing one eye at a time. So one of my eyes is recovering. And um, I was kind of like, well, I can't put makeup on it or anything. So I don't know. I feel like I look weird on one side of my face. But anyway. All right. So tonight I want to talk about, um, hey, Heavenly Creation. Tonight I want to talk about, I saw something um, on, I don't know, one of the social medias. Because you know I'm on all of them all the time. And the question was, should a man, I'm going to say should, should a significant other, because I don't think that it just pertains to men, should your significant other defend you or, or their significant other um, against their family from the insults? So, you know, if, if somebody, Brian's sister didn't like me, let's say, and you know how we get, especially our, our, you know, our melanated folks, you know, we got real slick mouths, right? And, you know, we say some things, something that might be feel like an insult or whatever. Do you think that it is Brian's job or your significant other's job to defend you? Or what do you think? What do you what do you think? I think it is. You think so? Well, even if it's like your mom, because everybody always yeah. says, well, it's my mama. I can't say nothing to my mama. Like You are, has, not, a, you are not a child anymore. You can. Uh, she might not like you, but you can you can defend your wife to your mother. I don't understand that. From a... From a Bible aspect. <laughs> Not the Bible. The Bible says leave and cleave. <laughs> that means leave your mama and cleave to your wife. Okay. That's Everybody's saying hell yeah. There we go. So, okay, but then, okay, so, because I've never, has anybody ever, have you been in that position? Has any, I've never been in that position. Um, my mom was when my mom was living my mom you know she didn't have a whole lot to say she was sweet and kind and everybody was baby and sweetie and honey you know and even if she didn't like him she would tell me later i don't like that boy but whenever he was around hey baby how you doing so you know she wasn't that tight <clears throat> um but and when i got married she was she was alive when i first got married but his parents were deceased right so i didn't have to deal with his parents um he had one sister um <laughs> the only thing I had to deal with in my first husband, the only thing I had to deal with with his one sister was she was a lesbian, right? So she had a crush on me that my husband didn't have had an issue with. I didn't really care. Like, you know what I mean? I, whatever. So Heavenly Creation says, my partner provides a level of protection. Him knowing how his parents are, he just kept me away from them so I didn't have to deal. Mm. But did you feel some, cause did you feel some type of way about that, right? Because I, you know, I feel had I've been in positions where I feel some type of way like when am I going to meet your friends or your family like did it feel like he was trying to keep them from you or did he explain that to you ahead of time because I feel like that can be a thing too right where you feel like what you just don't want me to meet your people yeah, you had me out um curvy girl says my mother-in-law came to my house and rearranged my curtains oh see thank god I, and when me and Brian got married his parents were deceased right so I have not had an overbearing, you know, mother-in-law. My husband told her not to do that. It's my house too. Okay. Um, Heather, so you did have until you met them. So Heavenly Creation says she, she did feel some type of way like what the hell until she met them and then she understood. Okay, I get that. I haven't, you know what? I honestly haven't met a lot of Brian's family. <clears throat> and the times that I brought it up, he like, I don't even like my family like that. Like He's like, you've met the people. I want you to meet that are important to me. And I'm like, you got to have more than a sister, right? <laughs> I have only met his sister and his nephews. I did finally meet a cousin. You met some of my friends? I met some of his friends. We went, when we went to Maryland last time, they had like a um, reunion type of thing. Um, and so I did get to meet some of his friends. The only because I came into town. <laughs> But like, you know, I was like, so are we going to, am I going to ever know any of your family? I think it's weird. I think it's weird when you don't know your significant other's family. Like y'all don't got to be besties or anything, but like, am I the only one that thinks that's weird? No. So you would defend me? Yeah. I don't, I feel, I, I will say that I will defend you, but I'm not sure that I will defend you in the way that you may think I should defend you, if that makes sense. Um, Heavenly Creation said, my partner knows the ones who show um, care for me. The rest cannot can kick rocks. So, what you say? Explain that. I don't know what that means. 
um, explain it. I, so what I, so, okay, I'm a, you know what, on this show, the HOT is because I'm honest, open, and transparent, right? Hot topics. So let me just be honest, open, and transparent. So Brian and I have actually had this um, instance where it was my son. My son is 21 and my son had some feelings of his own about, you know, what he perceived, you know, because kids don't really get to know all the details and the ins and outs of your relationship, or at least they shouldn't. Disclaimer, if your kids know all your business in your relationship, that's a whole nother topic. But so he doesn't get to know all the ins and outs and details of our relationship. But um, so all he knows is what he sees, right, or what he's experiencing. So, um, that caused him to have some, some thoughts, I guess, or feelings about Brian. And then Brian, of course, has his own thoughts and feelings because Brian thinks that he, that I spoil him and that I let him, you know, talk to me in a way that Brian is uncomfortable with. And so they both kind of had like this thing, right? So, and I was always in the middle, like they, neither one of them ever talked to each other. It was like, Brian would tell me something and then I would feel like, well, let me go explain this to my son. And then my son would tell me something. And then I would be like, well, let me try to explain this to Brian. Brian, you know, uh, if he needed something from my son, well, can you go knock on the door and ask him? Like, why can't you ask him? Like, they just, they got, it wasn't that they didn't get along. Like, in each other's presence, it wasn't awkward, right? It wasn't like, oh, we in the same room. Huh? So it, it wasn't that like they can't be in the same room and it's, it's tension. It was just that like when it came to like getting down to communicating for real, they, they weren't doing it. So anyway, my son um, drives our vehicles and so he, he likes to drive the car so the gas light is on and has been on for three days. So we had to replace the fuel pump. The first time that we replaced the fuel pump, you know, we were like, look, the mechanic kind of said that you're, you're going to have to do this again if you keep doing this with the gas tank. So I told them as a rule that I don't want this car to ever get below a quarter tank of gas. And for the most part, we live in a place where ain't nothing to do. So I ain't running the streets. Brian ain't running the streets. My son is the one who's going back and forth wherever he's going. So it happened again. We had to replace the fuel pump. And this time, you know, Brian was like, I'm not paying for it. So I call this family meeting, you know what I mean? So I can tell him, you know, you're going to have to at least pay for half of it or whatever. And I don't really know what or how it, it got, it went left. I'm not sure what, what was the, the thing that tipped it over. He didn't understand why he had to do any, any of it. Okay. So he didn't understand why he had to pay for any of it or whatever. And so then he kind of started... What I knew, which of course Brian wasn't privy to, what I knew was when he started talking to Brian, he started talking from his place of frustration from what he had been experiencing and seeing or whatever. And from all Brian knew was that like he's being mad disrespectful. So I did not interrupt them or him being disrespectful because I really wanted them to come to a place where they could communicate with each other, right? So y'all can, if y'all can work this out on your own without me getting involved, that would be great. So I did sit back and allow it to happen. When my son finished saying everything he had to say, then Brian, you know, started talking. But I also feel like Brian is the adult, and like, you know, Brian, if, if you if you know Brian at all, you know that Brian only has zero and a hundred, right? He, he rarely has anything in between. And right. so Brian will take things there quickly. And that was, that, that was not the case. That was not the case. That was not the case. Why do you say that was not the case? As I'm continuing to talk, I'm ignoring the time, the, the, all the time I'm being told. I don't, don't want to hear all that and we turn your back on I'm talking. I don't want to hear all that, all that you saying. How was that me then responding to that? I actually, no, I, I ignored all of that. It wasn't until I was asked to step outside. That's when I was like, oh, let's go. That's when you jumped in after I said that. Well, yeah, because like, well, we're not, we're not going to get physical here, right? So I jumped in when Brian said, let's go outside. No, I, no, I didn't ask. Well, I didn't say no, that. I what, responded. Well, when you responded, that was saying we going outside, right? I was, I was asked. Okay, but I, that's when I was like, no, no, this is what we're not about to do. Now y'all being extra. We need to just be able to have these conversations. So Brian 
in turn felt some type of way. You know, later on, he told me that he felt some type of way because he felt like I didn't jump in and stop his son or say or stop my son. Stop my son or say to him, you know, you're being disrespectful or whatever in that moment. I did eventually tell him that. But Brian, you know, felt some type of way in that moment that I allowed him to disrespect him. And I didn't say anything until Brian said something. And then, you know, so anyway, but I did at some point be like, okay, that's enough. But so that's why I said I feel like I would step in, but not necessarily in the way. I feel like your, the, your old school thinking and the way you were raised, I feel like what you would want me to do is just immediately jump in and slap the hell shit out of him, right? No. <laughs> no, I would tell you to say something. That's all I, that's it. Because the other issue is, he can talk to everybody any kind of way, but the way you, but then when you do it to him, it's an issue. You got to watch how you talk to him. No, nah, I'm not doing that. This is how I feel. This is my place of frustration. Why can't I say what I want to say? You said what you had to say. When your place of frustration, why can't I say that? Why can't I do the same? Okay. So y'all heard that, right? <laughs> so, um, but I don't, I mean, like I've never, I've honestly never had an experience like in, you know, anybody that I was dating or married to where any <clears throat> of their family members were like disrespectful to me. Um, so I don't, I don't really know how I would respond. I feel like I know how I would respond, but I, I don't know. I know you don't. You know, I don't. I know you don't know how you respond. Why you say that? Because you think you do this, but you wouldn't do that. Um, he sure wouldn't be using my car again, Heavenly Creation said. <laughs> exactly. Listen, they, that was that was an issue also. After that, they talked about it. They worked it out. But the whole point for me was like, y'all have to talk about this and work this out. Like, I cannot <clears> be. <throat> it's stressful to me that I cannot be. Hey. Um, I cannot be Melvin. I cannot be the the go between person. Like, and so literally, I'm at work, and Brian is right here, and Noah are right here, and both of them will be texting me, asking me about each of them. What? Like, what? why didn't you just ask Brian? Why don't you just ask Noah? And so it's still kind of a thing, right? You know what I mean? It's still kind of a thing. They still don't do a whole lot of extensive conversation. Um, but I, do you think it has improved at all? No. Okay. It's not cool to play middleman when folks don't want to talk. That's what I'm saying. Like, I just, I don't want to keep doing that, right? I just, <clears throat> I don't want to do it. And so both of them, rather than, like, if I put my foot down and be like, no, you go ask Brian yourself. Noah just, you know, he just won't ask. Like, he just won't say anything. He'll just be like, well, forget about it. You know what I mean? And Brian, he won't ask either. Um, sometimes he will. Yeah, he's out. So, so, okay. So, so with, I guess the consensus is that most people, would, but what would you do in a situation where your significant other doesn't say anything? Side out the whole damn time. And how significant are they? Are we significantly married? Are we significantly dating? Well, I didn't want to put anybody in a box. Know, know, you know just, what I mean? Because because you could be like in a serious relationship and not be married. So that's why I didn't say like your husband or your wife. So, but I'm but I'm talking about somebody who's a, like you know a, a living partner, um, your husband, your wife, your whatever you're calling yourselves. But at this point, you've pretty much decided we together. Like, so how would you deal <clears> with it if they didn't say anything to the disrespectful family member? I just wasn't. I just wouldn't go. I stay in my my own little area and do what I'm doing. You so you so what would you and then what what about if they got upset? Like what do you mean you're not coming to the um cookout? <clears throat> if who got upset? Your spouse. Like I, what if I got upset? Like what you mean you're not coming? You could drink it long. Well, this is my thing. If you ain't defending me when I'm there, so what I need to be there for? So you ain't got to defend nothing. Except my hand here. You can make me the reason why I ain't come. I got in a car accident. I had to work. I died. Whatever you want to say. What? <laughs> no, so now you want me to lie to my family members? There was two other options before I said I died. You said I got in a car accident. That's, what do you? Then I said I had, I had to work. The, but all of those things would be lies. They're all still lies. So why did you say that <clears> as <throat> if that was better? 
well, you're not gonna say that he ain't come because I don't defend him. So what else? Is, what other option is there? Heavenly creation says boundaries <clears throat> are the place where I can respect you and me at the same time. If my boundaries can't be respected, I will remove myself. You know what? Boundaries is such a hot word right now. So it's toxic. Boundaries is such a hot word right now. Like, what does what does it really mean when you say your boundaries, right? What, what does that really mean to y'all? It's like the word toxic, right? Everybody's toxic. It's toxic. It's toxic. What does that really mean when you say boundaries? Are boundaries like just the things I don't fucking <coughs> like? Or are boundaries the shit I don't feel like dealing with today? Like, do boundaries change and move? Like, because with they your should. mood... So they shouldn't boundaries. Do they change and move with your mood? Like, how do you define what you would call a boundary? And why do we feel like everyone should respect our boundaries? Mm -hmm. There's nothing up there. I already read that. Okay, I need to know. So what do you think about boundaries? Miss <laughs> Devin, I need to hear from you. More to love. Come on, y'all gotta talk to me so I can talk to you, or else I'll just be talking to myself. Heavenly creation said it's a respect of autonomy. Oh, that's not that word. Heather, I'm sorry. Heavenly creations, autonomy is a like a trigger word for me, right? <laughs> because when we first got into Polly Amory. That word was thrown around everywhere all the time. It's my autonomy. There. It's my autonomy. I have to get autonomy. And I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> because whenever I was hearing the word autonomy initially, I felt like people were throwing it around as if I get to do whatever the hell I want to do because it's my autonomy to do so, right? Yeah, like a boomerang. And I'm like, that's not, like, just because you have autonomy doesn't mean you, you get to do whatever the hell you want to do. Like, you, I feel like if in your autonomy you want to disrespect my boundaries, like, I, that doesn't work for me. Um, it's accountability for your place in things. Okay. So, so, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm getting to where I don't even know if I like the word autonomy, right? Because I feel like autonomy, the definition of it in and of itself like, we should all be respecting either way, right? Should be. Like, we've all known, before we start calling it autonomy, right? <laughs> we all knew that, like, you know, you have your own free will and that you can choose to do whatever you want to do. But when I started hearing the word autonomy being thrown around, it started being thrown around like, yes, I have my free will. I can choose to do what I want to do. And I don't think there should be any consequences for what I do because it was my autonomy to do so. So... I don't know. Like I don't. I feel like people kind of just throw it around. Um, <laughs> Heavenly Creation says it's your son's autonomy to run that car into the ground, but there's accountability in that because that can result in no car because there was no respect for the other person using the car. Okay. So basically, autonomy is you. You can do whatever the hell you want to do. That's your business. Um. And but so like whenever I've heard the word used and referred to, it's always been used and referred to as if um, no one can tell you not to run their car, <laughs> you know what I mean, into the ground because I should have free will. You shouldn't be trying to control me and I should have the free will to do what I want to do. But I'm like, is it really control or is it like you're saying accountability? <clears throat> There's, con but every time I agree with you, Heavenly Creations, but every time I've heard it used, I've always heard it used as if there shouldn't be any consequences because now you're trying to control me if there are consequences. I'm going to tell you the truth. <laughs> oh boy. The, <laughs> before this party lifestyle, the only time I heard it word autonomy was in Boomerang. When he was like, I have total autonomy for the commercial markets. <laughs> That was the only, that was the first only time I heard into this party lifestyle. So I was like, okay, total control. Okay, all right, cool. I got what that means. But I hadn't heard it since until. Your autonomy should only be within your realm of control. If your autonomy is pushing someone's boundaries, that's where it's not cool. 
Well, see, that makes sense, right? But So that makes sense. I think that everybody's not getting the memo in the poly world. Everybody's not getting the memo on what autonomy really means. I think they are. I think they are. You know, people, they, 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 take, a, they take a word and give it its own definition. I like this word. I like what it means. I'm going to change it a little. I'm going to tweak it a little bit. Just like, oh, girl, that's my, with, the, with the game. <laughs> she tweaked that. and You see how that shit went? He talked. We watched Mary. Sorry. We watched Mary. Heather said, she said, no, they aren't. I think that they're not. I think that a lot of people, especially newcomers to polyamorism, are coming in. They're learning this word autonomy. And they've decided that that means that I can do whatever the hell I want. And nobody should be able to say anything or stop me from choice. doing it because it's my choice. And if my significant other or whoever has a problem with what I'm choosing to do, then they are infringing upon my autonomy. And I'm like, no, that, that's not... <laughs> They're, they're, that's not how it works. If you are married or you're in a relationship or whatever and you guys have agreements, you, you can't just decide that they're trying to infringe upon your autonomy when they're saying to you, you're crossing the lines of what we agreed about. Because to me, that's how it always comes across. Like autonomy means that I get to do whatever the hell I want and nobody gets anything to me unless because they're trying to control me. And so, yeah, that part. I'm just saying that if we if you use the word autonomy, then use it right. Exactly. Lord, y'all, my daughter's just texting me, talking about she told the girl she could stay the night tonight. Y'all know that I run a halfway house part time. Sadly, I know this is off topic, but you know we're talking about my life right now. So sadly, it seems as though my child is the only one of all of her friends in in Lawton, America, where we live that has a stable home. They all have issues with their mamas and their daddies and their brothers and their cousins and them. And so they all run to our house. This will be what, her third friend that has lived here? They ain't living here, she's staying the night. They always try to live here. <laughs> she's had two friends live she here. She ain't eating tonight either. She gotta eat tonight. She don't. We have to feed her. Do we? Yes. I like to feed her. <laughs> Ain't my friend, ain't my mom, ain't my monkey, ain't my Y'all, listen, oh, you know what, um, Heavenly Creations, your husband asked me a question today, and um, when he, on that questions game, he asked me, have I ever regretted uh, being with my partner, and if so, why? And I said, well, regret is a strong word, and I, so I, I have never regretted it, but I'd be lying if I said that I haven't ever sat back and thought, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> Because we're both Capricorns, so we do have similarities, but in the places that we're different, like we're vastly different, right? <laughs> in the places that we're different, like we are completely left and completely right. This guy is weird because he does really have a big heart, but he doesn't have that. a big heart until he likes you. No, that's not true. <laughs> yes, it is. You don't, you don't have a big heart. You don't have a big heart until you like the person or you know them. That's not what it is. Like, as in this situation, I believe it's our daughter being bored and wants to have, have, have a playmate over. So she's not bored. Yeah, but the girl showed up to our doorstep crying, calling the police. I, so I don't think that it's also, I don't think it's a case of. <laughs> hmm. Anyway. She was a Capricorn. Hello. Uh, she says, I'm a Cap Oh, a Capricorn moon. Okay, listen, y'all. I don't get into all these suns and moons and stars, but <laughs> I don't know about the risings and the fallings and the fourth house and the fifth house. I, I mean, I guess I could look it up because I do have the apps on my phone. But, um, okay, Virgo. Yeah, Virgos and Capricorns actually get along really well. Um, but she says she's a Capricorn move, moon. Guess that's why I love y'all. Like it's too much. Like I try, like I try, you know what I mean? So I have the apps, right? What are those apps called? I don't know. I don't know what yours is. I, I like Cosmic RX. No, no, no. I have, pa pa is it Pat? The pattern. The pattern. And I have another one. The path is a show. <laughs> I, I have another one. So they tell me what moons and houses and stuff <laughs> I'm in, but I don't, I don't, be, I don't got time for that. Like, do y'all really follow astrology? So it's Cosmic RX. Oh, it's called a natal chart. Okay, we'll see. I didn't even know. I knew it was some houses and some moons. Um, it was a rising and a descending. I, I knew I've, I've read it like on the pattern, but um, it's too much. Like it's too much. I'm just 
I'm just trying to Capricorn rule. Listen, Capricorns are the beginning and the end. Right? The begin even Jesus was a Capricorn. I keep telling y'all that. Like Capricorns are just where's that? I'm just and plus we're dope as fuck. Like, have you met a Capricorn that you didn't like for real? Probably. Not dated a Capricorn, because that's a different world. But have you met a Capricorn? Probably. You met a Capricorn you didn't like? Yeah. Oh. I'm not gonna put the name on there, <laughs> but I met it. I'm like, yeah, I can't. It's like getting the cliff notes for a person's personality. <clears throat> well, listen, it's been my experience that you can read all them notes. <laughs> And still be like, what the fuck? Like, I promise. So, I mean, I guess it helps. You know, one thing I have learned is that I will never in this lifetime on earth ever again. Well, you know what? I never say never. I will do my best never in this lifetime on earth ever again to date a Gemini man. It's a no for me. We have a whole plan in our heads that no one knows. <laughs> now, that's the truth. That is the truth. And what's funny is that, like, Brian says that to me all the time. He's like, well, I didn't know you had the whole plan in your head. And you never even told me. But like you said, he does the same thing. He does the same thing. And um, y'all go somewhere look, looking like hood rats. Don't go back outside looking like that. No, I'm planning on going outside. Well, don't go back outside looking like that. You're not representing me well. Um, listen, those Gemini's, it's a no, it's a, it's a hard no for me with Gemini men. Miss Devin said they are not well. <laughs> they, you know what? I can even deal with a Leo man better than I can a Gemini man. Like it is so stressful being with a Gemini man. I'm never going to do it again. Like I've been scarred for life by Gemini men. With this one particular man. And I just don't see me ever doing it again. Not on purpose. He's going to have to really woo me. And, and you know. Your first husband was a Gemini. Just know. Yeah. He's going to have to like really woo me. And really you know. Say and do some things. That show me that he's like a whole different. It's a no. <laughs> it's a hard no. I'm sorry if there are any Gemini men. That watch this or will see this. But it is a no. You just cut one off? Why? Because he was crazy, right? Like, so I, my Gemini man that I had, what the issue for me was that he was more emotional than I was, right? Like, I could never be in my feelings because he was always in his. Who got time, who got time for a whiny-ass man about every? He was always in his feelings. I don't got time for it. Oh, your own first husband was one too, and it's a no. <laughs> yeah, I, I never met a more emotional man, and not emotional like a crier, but just he whined and complained all the damn time. I never met anyone like a guy like that before in my life. And I just was like, this is ridiculous. Like, I'm sitting around feeling like I'm the dude in the relationship, and he's the chick. Like, I never, he was in his feelings about everything. My ex said he started arguments just so we could have great makeup sex. Like the fuck? Like, get, get, why? What you mean? Like, what you, we can have great sex without arguing. Like, is that not a thing for you? Oh, I guess I cannot. I just sassy and mad. Right. They got right. They just got two, two moods, right? Either they smart mouth and sassy or they mad and upset about something. All the damn time. <laughs> How is that possible with a guy? And y'all blame us for our periods and shit. But no, it's a no. It is definitely a no for me. So I hope there's no Gemini men watching because it's a no. Okay. So let me tell you what else I want to talk about. Because it looks like we have um, only most, except for Rock, we have ladies on the show. So we can really get into it. Brian might not like it, but you know, it's my show. I saw something the other day. Kevin Samuel says that if a woman is single past the age of 35, then she's just leftovers. Yep. Okay, oh, somebody wants to join the show. I don't know who this is. 
Horace Werengen, you want to join my show? Why? What do you want to say? I, I, I've never seen you watch the show before. I can't just put any old body on the show. You might say some off the wall shit to my people. Um, you. I, so here's the thing. Um, no, he's not speaking of fertility. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't know if I've made a decision that I can't stand him. To be honest, I haven't actually listened to enough of his stuff to. I haven't listened to enough of his stuff to say, like, you know, because I, I try not to go by hearsay. So I only know what bits and pieces of what other people have told me. Oh, hey, hey. So, um, how are you? One of my TikTok view, um, followers and I follow her. She wrote a book and everything. I'll let you come in in one second. Give me a minute. Um, I, I haven't listened to enough of Kevin Samuel stuff to like make a hard decision that like, I don't like him. Cause I've only heard, you know, bits and pieces, excerpts from what other people have said that he said. So I'm not going to make a blanket judgment. I try not to ever judge people, um, on, you know, what everybody else thinks about them. Um, Ms. Devin says, I can agree with some of his dialogue, but it's his delivery. So I just came across this and I just was like, and, and I didn't listen to the whole show. I do not know the context, but, um, the comments and stuff were basically saying that he was saying that, that basically if you're not married by 35, if you're leftovers, because it, it means that nobody pretty much wants you if you're not married by 35. So, um, and, and, and I feel like they said that his delivery is blunt and very direct. I feel like he says things to people for shock value. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that even though it's for shock value that he actually believes it. Cause I don't, I try not to say things that I don't believe are true, <laughs> even if I know it's controversial so I'm feeling like even if he's saying it for shock value, he must find some truth in what he's saying. Um, and that's a good point. He is he's rude. Um, Corey says now. Um, that's a good point. He's assuming that mo that women want to get married in the first place, right? Because the statistics are showing that you know women don't really want to get married like they used to. Like you know we're all we're we're in this time in our lives where we're like Miss Independent, you know. Um, and having kids and trying to find love is stupid in his opinion. Well, I mean, then then why are we getting married? Women are not milk past their expiration date. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I tell people all the time that if me and Brian don't work out, I'm going to be Blanche from the Golden Girls. Like, I'm going to always be getting it. Like, you know what I mean? I will always do the damn thing as long as it is humanly possible for me to do it. But I just wonder, um, like, why, why is he that way? So, so I was hoping, Rock, Rock, are you, if you're listening, give us some insight. Brian is coming back. I'm going to ask him too. Um, then. She said no problem. What? Oh. Um, he's going to answer me too because I want to know like do men secretly because is Kevin Samuel saying the shit that men are thinking anyway and they're just no. not saying it like so do you guys kind of secretly think that like a woman after 35 who isn't married or I guess has never been married um, is leftovers I don't I'm going to tell you why <clears throat> like y'all like already said they may not want to be married, married but the second thing is if you're a man and you're single too you're that in 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 return, that means you're leftovers too. So, well, is it from his perspective that men are, can't ever be leftovers? Because from his, from his yeah. perspective, men are the prize, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Corey says, "I think Kevin Samuels wants to be a woman." <laughs> I, I said myself. He acts as if he is the subject matter expert on women. Heavenly Creation said, I heard him say that women will never get a man better than their child's father. Now, that's a goddamn lie. Listen, he should have asked a whole bunch of women that because I can tell you that's not true at all. Especially depending upon, like, how old you were when you had, a fa had the kids, right? Because if you were 16, that little boy you had that baby with, he don't know. He ain't get... Anyway. 
um, he represents the keeping up with the Joneses type of people. Yeah. So, I, so you say that you don't agree with Kevin Samuels' views. I don't. You don't. Where did Rock? Rock, do you agree with Kevin Samuels' views? I need to know what's going on. He says, I think he says um, what women want to hear about women, not just themselves. Right. Because this, this is my thing with that. Wait, Kevin Samuels was in bed with another man? That's what Corey said. Was he not in bed with another man? No, I don't know. Oh, because I don't know. This, um, this is my He says what women want to hear about women, not just themselves. Mm, not always. Okay. My thing is this. I don't know why he's putting the age on it. That's something he dealt with or had to deal with. You don't, you don't know anybody's past. You don't know. He was in the bed with a man, though? <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. Because I'm trying to I'm trying to understand this. Two people say he was. So how is he the authority on women when he like boys? He, he like he they say he like boy pussy. <laughs> he like, That's Bernie Mac say. <laughs> Bernie Mac say he like boy pussy. Or does he like both? He could be bi. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> that was a great movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's so mad. But anyway. Um A man was in his bed. <laughs> oh my god. Y'all are on live, and that's why you ain't take me back. But I wanted to know if it was okay for Donnie to stay here for a couple days until her dad gets back from out of town, so she can go stay with him. I'm on the radio, so I'm gonna have to discuss that with you when I finish. I'm a good friend, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> he hates black women. So does is he married? I don't think so. Is Kevin Samuels married? Because here's the other thing: how you giving him marriage advice, and you ain't even married. He's been divorced twice. <laughs> Who made him got man? Right. He has to deal with his own sexual proclivities. Yeah, cause that's cause he is cause that is a lot. Cause I know. Halfway house. Thank you. You heard her <laughs> because I only read the preview of the text message, but now she talking about can she stay for a few days? You know what I mean? I got the feed. Anyway, that's just. Beside the point. She know I'm going to say yes because that's who I am. I'm not going to let nobody's baby be on the street. You know what I mean? But still, like, I didn't ask for that. I barely want they asses here. Um. Okay, so. Huh? It's such a laugh. So, so, so you don't think. So, let's go ahead. I'm sorry. I cut you off again. Kevin Sanders does not speak for men. And Rock, you saying. You think that he's saying what women want to hear about other women? Why? We're going to get into that in a second. But go ahead. You don't know what they had to deal with before they got to whatever age. So if you're trying to deal with other traumas and other whatever whatever happened in your life, you want to try and get that, take care, get that taken care of before you get into a serious relationship. So however long that takes, however long, whatever went on, it takes time to get past that. So it ain't left those because and then you got to come into your own as a person. Beside any kind of traumas, you know what I'm saying? So all that can take some time. Mm. Again, find out people's background before you start making these blanket statements that don't make any sense. Um, I'm talking about what I want to be. <laughs> Corey said, I want to hear other queens uplifted. Exactly. So that's that brings me into something else. I was I was on a Zoom. Um, he's benefiting off of the brokenness and unresolved traumas of, of black women. That's, I agree. That's rough. I agree with that. Yeah, because here's the thing. Not only do men listen to him, but women listen to him as well. And then they feel like, you know what I mean? They start they start um, questioning themselves and their own value based upon the stuff that he's spewing out to other men. And other men are now quoting to women, right? So, um, that that's, 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 that's troubling for me, right? I, we, I did a Zoom. Um, Hold on. That's toxic. It's to that is toxic. <laughs> uh, we're too old for the negativity. He has the nerve to rate women at a exactly. rate. Exactly. Yeah, I don't. I mean, and here's the thing to me. Like, I feel like that varies from person to person, right? That high value, low. Yeah, that high value, low value. Right. So now, like, you don't know how long I heard people, women, men, walking around talking about whether they thought they were high value or low value. Of <laughs> course, we are movies, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and so so I, I we were doing a Zoom um, 
in our poly group the other day. And the question came up, if you watch the show, if you've seen it before, one of the things that we had talked about was, um, is it, should we be blaming the men for women running out, getting all these BBLs and um, all these, you know, surgeries to enhance themselves? Like, is that the men's fault? Because we're trying to get a man. We're trying to keep a man happy. We're trying to do all these things for a man. Um, or is it something deeper? Um, officially, Kima says he asks about men relevant things like height, weight, etc. He is a manipulator who monopolizes conversations and hangs up when he cannot control the convo. Yep. You listened to him before? Some people posted. Oh, yeah. I don't be having the energy for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, and so the question came up like, why are women, why do black women in particular, um, and I can only say black women in particular because I ain't never been white or, you know, I always been black. I've been, <laughs> I've been this color my whole life. So why do we not support each other? Like we say we're doing it, you know what I mean? But why do we not support each other and lift each other up the way that we should? Why do we not, why do, why are we not doing that? Now, some of the answers that came from that Zoom were, that like one of the people in the Zoom said that ultimately we're always in competition with each other. The, 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 there is a shortage or a perceived shortage of good black men out there. And so we're always in competition with each other trying to get the good black man and then trying to keep him. So when we get dressed, when we get these BBLs, we put on our makeup and stuff, they say that we're doing that for other women. Not the men. We're doing that so another woman can be like, mm, did you see what shoes she had on? We tear each other down. So why do we do that? And why are we so forgiving when it comes to a man? A man can treat you like trash and you will take him back. But your girlfriend can say something you didn't like and you ain't never speaking to that bitch again. Like, why are we this way? What do you think that is really about? Um... Most men I talk to prefer a natural woman. They may like to look at a paid for bubble butt, but that's not what they commit to. Okay? Sharing is caring. That is true. They weren't fake natural women. Do you wear nails or lashes? Just saying. Uh, okay, so I do wear, I don't wear nails. They're actually my real nails. I get an overlay over top of my real nails. I do not wear lashes. But I also don't walk around talking about how real and fake I am, right? Like, I, have you ever heard me say, I don't walk around, you know, spouting I'm real, I'm a real woman, I'm a real bitch. Like, I don't do that. I don't say how real or fake I am or how anybody else is real or fake. Like, like if I'm saying that, I'm referring to their personality, not their hair or their clothes or their purse. Um, their purse. It says, yeah, because everybody's like, that's a fake purse. That ain't no real Gucci. Like, you know what I mean? Um... So she's saying that the men want fake natural. Like, they want you to be natural, but they still want you to get your nails done and, and wear your lashes. Um, I don't care about the day on lashes. No. Men ask natural women that. Okay, yeah, so I I don't know, but I, I like I said, it kind of bothers me to know that, um, hey, Red Pill, it kind of bothers me that because I just want to know, like, why are we this way? Right, you know what I mean? And when you're trying not to be that way, you are considered a minority. Like other women are looking at you like, what's what's she really trying to do? She says she uplifting women, but what's she really trying? You know what I mean? Like we just we don't trust each other. We don't hold each other accountable. We don't build each other up. We don't put each other on. You know, somebody said, girl, that's a nice dress. Where you get that dress from? Oh, I can't even remember. You know damn well you got that dress from Fashion Nova. Like, why is that a secret? You know what I'm saying? Like, why are we do? Why are we this way? I, I, I just, I need answers, and I need somebody to help me. I have my thoughts, but I, I keep them to myself. They're too deep. You? Oh, you too deep? <laughs> no, I, didn't say, I didn't say I am. You tried it. Okay. I, say, I never said I'm deep. I never said that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I want to bring the show down. Corey, chorus. Says, I personally do not subscribe to competing with other women. I'm always like, okay, queen, you look beautiful. They want, they want what white men have. If they don't like our eyes, hair, skin, nails, you don't like me. 
we compete with each other, but we we all can. And that's what I'm like. Why can't we all win? Like, why is there a competition? Here's the thing. When it comes to men, my mother taught me a very long time ago that you can't keep nothing that don't want to be kept. Right. So I don't spend a whole lot of energy at all. You know what I mean? Trying to compete with the next woman to keep my man or to get a man. I'm just not doing it. Right. Like either he going to be here because he wants to be here and he's happy or not. Like, or not. Like, I, to me, it's just that simple. Um, I, I just can't spend... I feel like you'll lose your mind spending all that energy trying to keep a man or get a man trying to be something that you're really not. Um, That's bullshit. We want... Okay, so Red Pill disagrees. It says, that's bullshit. We want what white men have. So whoever made that comment, if you would expound on that a little bit more... Right, Corey, if he my man, then he my man. Like, um, I'm reading. Okay. Um, if 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 he's my man, then he's my man. I'm not gonna, you know what I mean, spend my, my time being insecure and worried and wondering about whether when he walks back past somebody who has a bigger butt than I do, that he's gonna leave me. Because if that's the case, I probably didn't need him anyway. Like if he was if it was if that's all it took, then good riddance. But why don't we as women, um, yes, he said that's BS. So he disagrees with the fact that um, black men want what white men have. Um, and then what are we talking about here? Are we talking about you want what the white men have? I, I want what the white men have this money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it's, I want that. You know what I mean? If it's equality, I want that. Uh, why do black men want a chick with contacts, eyelashes, and bundles? If you don't want white women. That's the question. Okay. So, Corey says, Corey says, if you don't want a white woman, why do you want a woman with contacts and bundles? If you want a white woman, get one. Contacts, eyelashes, and bundles. Okay, so I'm saying if you're asking a black woman to alter how she's looking to look like another type of woman, you don't want a natural black woman. We didn't say anybody asked anybody to change anything. Well, she's referring to the men who ask women to change things about themselves. If, you, if that's not you, then that's you good. <laughs> and but there are men out there who do ask women, you know what I mean? Can can you can you wear your hair longer? Can you know maybe the, maybe when he met her she wore her hair natural and like an afro and he's like can you try you know get a weave or what? Because he prefers the straight long like you know what I mean. I've I've definitely heard of that. Type but hold thing. on, but with that, white women get bundles too. Let's let's not act like they don't. And I I never thought about it until it became a thing with the chick on Friends, Phoebe, the ditzy friend, the girl on Friends. She hers wasn't all hers. So they getting them too. So who are they trying to be like? They're already white. Um. Um. Officially, Kima says black men do this a lot. She says I like fit men. Black men buy into colonized thinking. So where is Red Pill? Because I want Red Pill Colonizer. to. I want Red Pill to respond. To the comment where she's saying, um, if you're asking black women to alter how they look to look like another type of woman, you don't want a natural black woman. Um, yeah, so I want I want us to I want I want our respond I want to see if there we get a response for that. Because it could also be Corey says I've never seen Friends. I've never seen it extensively. I've I've caught an episode or two here and there, Corey. <laughs> I, I I didn't get it too because there wasn't no black folk on there. Then they added Aisha Tyler years later. And I was like, at that point, I didn't really care. So was a black woman on there? Yeah. I never saw a black person on Friends. I mean, but but I my sister watch watched it all the time. She loved that show, and she, and that's how I found out she would say, you know, it's this whole big thing about Phoebe having a weave. I was like, why they care? I'm like, hair is hair. So what? But that, and that became a big ass thing just because I guess if she was a white woman with more than weave, but I'm sure she ain't the only one. Now, I, now, Kima, I do agree with you with this comment. She says, we accept black men as they are. And I agree with you. I do agree that more often than not, 
black women accept black men as they are. We, we see their potential. We see their growth and we, we love them for who they are. And I do agree that, that we are more accepting of black men as they are than vice versa. Um, so Red Pill says, I don't think men can be kept. But I think there should be a healthy level of work that goes into keeping one, though. A woman should do things that set herself apart, that shows her value to a man. Um, Corey says, not all black men think like you, sir. Okay, so, okay, I do agree with what you're saying, um, Red Pill, so let me clarify. When I'm, when I'm saying that I, you can't do anything to keep a, keep a man that doesn't want to be kept, I'm saying that to mean, of course, I'm not going to let myself go, right? I'm going to still do the things that are required of me and the things that I know make my man happy to please my man and, and things of that nature. I'm not by any means saying that like once I get a man, I'm like, well, I got you now. Either you're going to stay or not. Like, no, I still think you, like you said, you have to do those things um, to keep his interest, to, to keep him happy, to, you know, vice versa. I think we're doing those things for each other. So I'm not by any means saying that like once you got a man, you can just let it go because he's yours and if he left, like I'm not saying that. I do agree that you still um, have to do the things that you did to get him to keep him. Um, Corey says, if a man doesn't see the value, why set up the set up to the step up to the chick? So women have to prove their value. As for a man wanting a woman to change a look, I think that is too broad of a statement. Okay. Um, of course that it is a broad statement. And of course I always say on here that, um, Hey there. Um, uh, I always say on here that, um, we can't speak for every black woman or every man. Like we can, we're, we're speaking in terms, really we're probably speaking more in terms of our experience or, and what, and our observances. Right. So the, the, we're just going to say that we're never saying that what we're saying applies to all across the board. So, but there are a lot of men who want a woman to change their look. Let's say that. So if you, if it's too broad and you need it to be, you know, narrowed down a little bit, then let us know where you want to do some of the narrowing. So, um, but I do, let's go back to what, um, Corey said, so women have to prove their value. If a man doesn't see the value, why step up to the chick? Let's let's get into that a little bit. Cause I had said the same thing when we did the when we did the Zoom when we were talking about this. I had said the same thing. I was like, look, what I'm never gonna do is I'm never going to go outside of myself to try to keep a man. But by, by that I mean I'm never gonna do no whole lot of extra stuff that isn't me. Because I'm trying to keep this man. Like if he's trying to go, then he can go. I'm never going, you know what I mean? I'm not getting a Brazilian butt lift to try to keep my man if it ain't something that I deep in my heart want to do. You know what I mean? I'm not cutting my hair or wearing weave or whatever if it's not something that I want to do just to keep a man. Um. Okay, um, you feel that's a disingenuous question. All people need to show their worth and value. You don't know someone's worth until after it's shown. A person isn't always worth, worthy or valuable. So I guess the, the initial, like, why step to a chick? He's saying that, like, you're not going to know that when you step to him. Um, okay. Heavenly Creation says, just because one person may not see value or worth in a person, that doesn't mean there is no value or worth in that person. That is correct. You, we've all heard... The, the term, you know, another one man's trash is another man's treasure, right? Because everybody's different. Everybody sees things differently. Everybody feels things differently. So that is most definitely the truth. My question is most genuine. What do you mean prove their value? Okay, so um, Red Pill, are you, you want to explain to us what you mean by prove their value? If Let me also say that if anybody feels like they're doing way too much typing and you want to jump in the box and show your face and talk and join the show, you can most definitely send a request and I'll add you to the show. Um, because I know sometimes the more you have to say, all that typing gets tiring. So if you feel like you need to jump in the box to, to get your point across or whatever, please send a request. We'll go ahead and add you. 
Um, then the question is, so men just step to any woman without any observation? Uh, yeah, I definitely think that's a thing. I definitely think that's a thing that men, you know, that she got a nice butt and she has a nice butt. Her boobs look nice. And so, yeah. Hey, E.B. Hey, hon, how are you? Doing good. So, it's not showing my face. Just showing my face. I didn't even know I was showing my face, but okay. <laughs> Y'all sent the request. You sent the request, so I added you. I just went, I, I was typing. So, 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 so on one part, back up later. So, first, I hate the I hate the disingenuous statement that you're supposed to know somebody's value just because you wanted to talk to them. You first, observe people, don't you? You can observe somebody, but most of the damn time, you're not you're not interacting with people. Most people cold approach, meaning that you're going to holler at somebody through an inbox, through a DM, through some sort of post. You know, most people aren't even interacting on levels of, oh, we're going to meet at work. We're not meeting people at work because, first off, we got Me Too and all these different things that stop men from wanting to talk to women at work because you can literally get a oh, home. Get, at work. Huh? You shouldn't talk to anyone at work anyway. That's just bad. Oh. Also. Group my point, thank you. Group my point, thank you. So then, okay, so then where are you going to meet them? Through a friend? Like, where are you meeting people? Where are people normally meeting nowadays? You're meeting people on the street. You're meeting people at a club. You're meeting people in whatever whatever space that you're, that you're naturally in. But it's not because you've been watching this person on some stalker shit. Like, you've been dealing with this person for three, four months, and they've just been a friend. That's not how you interact with people nowadays. You holler at a person to get to know them. You're talking to a person to get to know them. And once you get to know them, then you know if that person is a person that you're going to deal with longer than whatever interaction that you've had with them. So they have to show, you have to show your worth. It's not, that's, that's just a disingenuous argument. Okay. Uh oh, the uh, other person got, got kicked out. Who got kicked out? Chorus. Oh. Hold on, I'm, I'm trying to get everybody where they're trying to go. Y'all got a lot to say. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. Okay. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I missed what you said. I don't know what you said. So then let's, I'm going to pose it like this. How do most people meet? When do they meet? When they're out and about. Like, so, I'm not, like, so that's fair. That's fair, right? So let's just stop there. Let's just okay. stop there. If I meet you when I'm out and about, I'm supposed to know your value from seeing you down the street. I'm supposed to know your worth from seeing you okay, down the street that, to my life. I think that there's something that you can see with someone um, when it comes down to the etiquette. You see someone, let's say you go to Chick Fil A, they choose to sit down and eat. She. Is she sitting like a basketball player? Is she chewing with her mouth open? Yeah, you can get these social, you can get kind of some cues from um, people just based on observing them. I see guys, I'm like, I would never talk to him. I mean, you get those, you get those cues from observing people. You're not gonna know, you're not gonna automatically know their value and everything about them, but you, you will get some type of cue from just I'm observing someone. You don't just, unless you just walk up to the first big booty chick you see and try to holler at her. So, so, and so let's just, let's just stick with the premise. Okay, I, I see a chick at Chick-fil-A and in this Chick-fil-A, I see that, okay, she's sitting with her legs crossed, she looks presentable and she is a clearly attractive enough for me to want to talk to her. I'm supposed to know if her mindset is one of that, that is going to be one that is building, supportive, nurturing. I'm supposed to know this. I'm supposed to know her through just observing her that she has these attributes that need to be a, that's a part of mindset. Because we can talk about that's beauty. Not what I said. You, that's not what I said. So I'm talking value. So let's now, since you pointed out that that's not what you said, then if what is valuable to you versus what is valuable to so a man. You are the one who said value, so you should define what you mean by so value. Brings mean that you're adding value to that person's life. 
that 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 person is bringing something that that is worth having that I can't produce for myself or that it requires for me to pay in some form of fashion <laughs> that value to be added. So attractive enough, Kima. Officially, Kima says so clearly attractive enough. Clearly attractive enough is the reason why you fucking wouldn't talk to them, but that doesn't mean that. The yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, I cuss in general. It's not. It's not a. It's, I have a sailor's mouth. It's not. It's really not like. A, it's not personal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can can we can we agree, just to to say that no one is going to be able to observe another person's intrinsic value that. You are attracted to what you find uh, visually appealing from across the room. And if there is an engagement that happens after that, it now gives you an opportunity to start to learn more about each other in order to determine if there, if you perceive enough value to try to build something. Because that really, that, that's, that's really what y'all are dancing around. I just said that multiple times. That's not that's not the same thing as, as saying what someone's value is because you're not going to know her value from from seeing her. But that was your argument. Your argument was that you should know someone's said, value when you start to interact value. with them. What? I have to prove their value to you. Because every day you have to <clears throat> Okay, value. so you this, prove started, your value that, that comment, this started because we were talking about, I said you can't keep anybody who doesn't want to be kept. So let's get off of when you meet a person and all of that kind of stuff. We're talking about when you're in an established relationship. You basically made a comment that said that you should be continuing to show your value, right? I agree. You should. And then that's when the question came up of, so you're, you're, you're placing value on me and whether I show it or not or something to that effect, right? Oh, yeah. So, so I'm going to, I know where you're going. So I'm going to answer the question like this. It's easier if I make it from a woman looking at a man than if I make it a man looking at a woman. So let me put it this way. If a man that you've been dealing with stops wanting to go to work, stops wanting to pay any type of duck, pull their weight, whether it's they're doing 50-50, whether he's paying all of the bills or anything like that, if he stops wanting to do certain things that shows that he's valuable to the household, wouldn't that make you not want to be with that person anymore? Like that man, he stops wanting to work. He right, stops so here's the thing. I get it, and, I, and I'm agreeing with what you're saying in that respect, but I think we're kind of talking about two different yeah. things, right? Because No, it's not two different because things. Because what it's I bad. said was, what, what I said was, since it all started from my comment, what I said was, I'm going to continue to be the good woman that I've been to him thus far, but I'm not going to jump through hoops and hurdles and, and, and run through fire. You know what I mean? I, but so when you say he's no longer working, he's no longer contributing to the household, for some, that is a deal breaker because he's not doing what he did when he got here. Okay. And and so then generally speaking, people put on relationship weight. We agree. So if yes. you put on relationship weight, men are visual creatures. If a woman puts on too much weight and he doesn't want to be with her anymore because she's gotten too big for him, for his taste, he's wrong. Because you didn't bring no, that. I, here's the thing. I do not think he's wrong. And it's funny that you would say that because even when we had the Zoom, I said, now here's the deal. If when you met me, I was 250 pounds, after we're together, you don't get to tell me that you think I should lose weight and I start running to the gym. No, when you met me, I was 250 pounds. If you knew you didn't <laughs> like 250 pounds, you should have said you didn't like 250 pounds to begin with. However, mm -hmm. If when that you met me, I was 130 pounds, and now I'm 250, I feel like that's a different ball game. So I can't, I can't disagree because I wasn't a part of that conversation, nor did I know about the Zoom conversation. What I can talk about is this conversation, which is what it appears to be on multiple occasions, on multiple conversations when it comes to relationship between men and women. It's okay what you denote to be a good woman or what it was that you were doing, but you don't know if you're, you could be upset at him and you're doing, you're cooking him food. Yeah. You're still doing the act, but you're not doing, you're, you're sliding the plate to him. You're, 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 you're like, do you want something else? Do you, yeah, you're still doing the act, but it's not with the same spirit. Yeah. You're still doing the same thing, but the spirit in which you're doing it is still the same. It matters just as much as what you were in the fact that you're doing the job. 
no one wants to be in an environment where you have a, a, a asshole. So no different than if you go to work. The reality is if you go to work and yeah, you can do your job, your competency just as matters just as much as your attitude. So it's no different than in a relationship. You can make up all these like hypotheticals, but the reality is, is that value added is predicated on each person and credit and starts and stops with that person. And so if you've been in a relationship with a person, we already assuming, okay, you've shown your value, but then you should also know your partner and what matters to them. And if what matters to them, you're not doing it, your value is not there. I'm not saying so that. You, that's so, 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 I, it, so basically me, what I'm hearing you say is that you, you want, you need to maintain your value. If you're in a relationship, because that's the pretense that y'all came at it with. The pretense I'm coming at it with was from, so using your pretense, yes, you should already, you should maintain your value. As a matter of fact, you should add to it because life moves. We evolve. You should add more and more to your, to your proposition chart. That's the, that's the least that you can do if you're in a relationship and you say that you care, care about somebody. Men However, and women. Men and women. Men and women. Men, because yeah. because yeah. Kima said something. Kima says, no, officially, um, Kima says, men always want to tell women how to be. And, and, what, and what I see, my, what my experiences have been, is that men, a lot of men, think that it's okay for you to, to have requests and place demands and, and want me to increase my value. But you all think that as long as you're continuing to do the bare minimum, we're supposed to be okay with that. So, so I, I, let, I, let, 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 me, let me jump in here on, on this here because because the, the the underlying issue really is about is is about the continuity of good faith. Are, are you are you moving in good faith towards each other after you're in an, after you have gotten established in the relationship, or, or are you more prone to take each other for granted? Because when you take someone for granted, the likelihood that you're going to put that same energy that you did in the beginning at this point becomes diminished. And it's in that, it's in that diminishing of, of good faith and effort that, that you put in to get someone, um, that's where the perceived uh, lack of value comes in. And, it's not, and it may not necessarily be that you don't value them anymore, but you've gotten comfortable. And and that is the thing that like, that that, right. that I think kills relationships. When you get comfortable and you feel like I got you, like it's an obligation mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. that I have you, and now now I own you. And it's not a black woman, black men thing versus a black woman thing. This is a human thing. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 when you when you do not, uh, um, from a personal perspective, put in that effort then it makes it very, very easy for you to, to also point the, the finger when you see when you don't think that the other person is, is putting in the effort. It be, really comes deflection. It becomes projection. Mm -hmm. And you want someone to value you to a higher degree than you think that they are. And that's often reflective of the fact that you're not doing the same thing. So let's, I mean, just let's get back to treating each other in good faith. I want yeah. what's best for you. Hopefully you want what's best for me. And then let's make a decision mm -hmm. based on how we choose to be with each other from this point moving forward. And if we need to come back and revisit the conversation, mm -hmm. then let's do that instead right. of defaulting to a, a bad faith estimation of the other person. It's mm -hmm. just that simple. Okay, men, I want you to respond to, Kima says black men aren't used to control so when a person lets them leave, they don't know how to. What 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 say you to that, sir? Black men ain't used to control. So when a person lets the what leave, what say they don't you know to that? To. Nah, no, I I can't get behind that. You know because that 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 is a that that's a a overt sweeping generalization. That is, I don't think that that's that's true. That doesn't come across to me in in good faith. Because just because you want to, just because some, one person says that they're allowing you to lead, doesn't necessarily mean that you are allowing them to lead. If you've got momentum in a certain direction of you doing things your own way for a long period of time then you probably then the likelihood is that you're not going to be as relenting on, on giving up the reins 
than than you would be in, in, in other situations. I mean, so it, that that's a person to person thing. That that that's not a that's not a. Um, so there's a question mark for in good faith. Can you explain that? I'm guessing they're asking what exactly do you mean when you say in good faith. Okay. When you have a, a I, when I say in good faith, it's coming to the, it's coming to the conversation, not ready to fight. It's coming to the conversation yeah. ready not to work together. Not being on a together. defensive. Yeah, not you being know, on I, a defensive. I used to say all the time, listen, what, what would be helpful for me is if we're having a disagreement that you would start off with the thought process that I'm not here to hurt you or purposely do anything to hurt you, right? So, because often we always think like we're against each other. But if we come not. into this, even though we don't agree, even though we're having an issue, if we come into this, like you said, in good faith, thinking that my man, my woman, my wife, my whatever, is not purposely trying to hurt me by whatever they said or did, then we can, if you can see it from that perspective, then yeah. things can be accomplished a lot easier. Yeah, let that be your default setting when coming to a conversation, especially if it has the potential to be a difficult conversation. Yeah. I believe I the best that. about you. I want you to believe the best about me. And if we can establish okay. those says, rules of engagement, then, then let's do it. Yeah, do it. I agree. I agree. Kima says that they want to dominate, not lead. Who, what black women wants to lead and control everything? So I would like to jump in right there. It's still a bit. It's a still a bit disingenuous of a question, if I have to be honest. Everybody um, question disingenuous to you. It is this because who was the That's because so so in the regards of if you let me clarify, in the regards of who, what is what, what is your definition or the position that you're taking? Where are you coming from with that statement? If you're coming from that saying, okay, because I view a leader to be X, Y, and Z, or I see it to be A, B, or C, then you're the leader of the ship still. So you can't say someone is not a good leader. They're trying to dominate because you're still trying to be in control or guiding that ship. You're not giving them the opportunity. However, a different position is when you go into a company, you're automatically going to allow that company to tell you what their operations, operational standards are, and you're going to fall in line. But when someone comes into a relationship, people have an ideal on, okay, I want to be led like this. If you, I want you to do it like this. I want you to tell me like this. Oh, also, mm -hmm. you have to kind of read my mind on if I'm in a good mood on how you should say this, because if you say this the wrong way, well, I might take it the wrong way, and then I'm going to go about it doing it this way. That's a disingenuous statement because there's too many convoluted points and you're, you, you're not defining how that leadership or what you're defining that leadership to be or look like. You are still controlling that. When you need to just kind of, if you want someone to lead you, be willing to understand that, okay, I'm willing to follow under this leadership or this um, vision. I'm willing to follow under this vision and go in the direction of where this person is trying to take me. If you don't trust the person to lead you, then you don't want to follow their vision. It's not a complicated situation. <laughs> it's not a complicated okay, so let me, let me some of the comments they, they're upset with you, Red Pill. They're upset with you. But but I will say that what I, I did, what I did glean from what you said, I do believe that there's probably some truth to that, to the point that you made that we come in with expectations of how we want this person to lead and guide and direct the family, right? We have our own expectations of it. And I will agree that it's, it's possible that when they don't fall in line with what we expected or what we wanted or how we thought it was going to be, then it's like you said, we're not really allowing them to leave. I do think that that is a good point um, because it's true, right? We all have our own expectations, our own thoughts, our own guidelines of how we want somebody to do a certain thing, how we want to be spoken to, whatever. Um, and so because the, somebody made a comment, they said they would listen to the guy in the orange because he knows how to talk to people. <laughs> I just think that the difference is, is that, is that the guy in the orange <laughs> says things more with honey and Red Hill says things more blatant and blunt and it doesn't always tickle your ears. Like you, Brian used to say to me a lot of times, he used to say stuff like, I don't like the way that hit my ears, right? It wasn't that he couldn't hear what I said or agree with what I said, but I don't like the way it hit my ears, right? So when we get, when we don't like the way it hit our ears, 
we immediately aren't even listening anymore. And we miss the whole point of what's trying to be said because we don't like the way it hit our ears. Well, I disagree with, with, with what what he said. I don't think I don't like the way it hit um, my ears. I just tend to disagree with what he's saying. It's like, uh, well, y'all want people to read your mind. Who? I mean, who, who wants people? That's what your experience is with other people. Uh, there's plenty of women who know how to speak up and say exactly what they want, how they want it, when they want it, or whatever, who are willing to have a conversation. You have to have a, di a, a dialogue with each other to mm -hmm. convey what you want. If you if you are being led and you want some, a, a man to lead you, then he has to follow. I'm a Christian, so he has to follow Christ. That's that's mm -hmm. part of that leadership that I'm looking that I need in my relationship. And so it's not that when you're almost it seems almost as if you're saying, well, they don't know what they want. They want you to read their minds. And and then if you disagree, then everybody's just disingenuine or the question is disingenuous. No, you're not. Yeah, I do think that we should not. I, again, I want to say when 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 someone is saying something, I, I feel like they're not saying that's true about all women across the board, although that's how it hits our ears. Right. It hits our ears when you say black women don't listen to nobody. It hits our ears like you're trying to say you talk about me because I'm a black woman. Right. So I do think that. Um, some of his statements are very broad in general, and they do make it seem like he speaks for all womankind, and that's not necessarily the case, right? Uh, so, so no, I don't. Can you admit that that's not necessarily the case? Yes, that's not the case. I can say no. yes. Okay, so no, no, <laughs> I work in majorities, not minorities. I work in majorities, not minorities. I can categorize a group and not talk about everyone in the group because I don't know everyone. But we, we have to, I, I really feel strongly that we need to get out of the, I'll leave that there. Moving on to what you said about, okay, your man, the, if you have a man, he has to, if he wants to lead, he has to lead through Christ. Okay, that's one criteria. There's probably more. And if there's more, as you keep on going down that rabbit hole of the, all the criteria of what it takes for a man to lead lead you in that in your life, you're you're putting more and more control on what you want, and not necessarily what the possibilities or the probabilities are of what that man who may come into your life actually can bring, because you see or you find the that the the value in that man and those characteristics. But that doesn't mean that there isn't other values. For example, Wendell speaks really, really, he speaks really slow. He has a slow cadence, but he also speaks in a way that makes it soft and palatable, palatable for people to hear. I speak very fast. I speak very direct. I speak very, I'm very confrontational, even if I'm not trying to be. I understand that those are two different, those are two different styles. In my line of work, that I have to work like, I have to speak like that. It's effective. It's strong, it's effective, and it's quick. I get results that way. In his line of work, he may need to speak in that way, and it's effective. But that doesn't mean that they both don't have their place, and they both don't have their, their, their operational goals. Along with that, if Wendell was to come into my line of work, or if I was to go into his, we would both be very ineffective at that space. We would have to change. We would have to adapt. And then one would speak like the other and the other one would speak like the other. The fact mm -hmm. I'm saying that to say, I'm bringing that point up because you're, every detail that you put in for what you want a man to do, be, or how they act is another form of control that you're trying to have over that situation, which means ultimately you're leading it. You're trying to tell him exactly how you want him to be, or you're trying to find this very, this, this, this unicorn, and that's you trying to say, okay, I want this man to do it like I would do it. And that's not realistic. That's not the same thing as having expectations out of a relationship in which you should have expectations out of a relationship. Why would you go into a relationship not having expectations? Expectations are... Uh, expectations. You've got to... Men go into relationships with expectations, just like women go into relationships with expectations. That doesn't mean she's trying to be a leader. So I think you're, com com I think you're conflating two different points. One, I'm saying, okay. Well, I ask other people because we hear in a bunch of what you think. I mean, what, what you think and I'm completing 
And that's not two different points. That's the same thing. You act as if women no, don't, because are I, not supposed to have expectations. The relationship. And women so ex having expectations the, means the relationship. That's not the same thing. So having an expectation and wanting leadership is not the same thing. So I can agree, but you just gave me two different examples, but I'm going to speak to the one thing that you just said. So expectations and and having criteria that is denoting how a person should act or move are two different things. And the way I'll speak on that. So <laughs> you, can have, you'll have, you can have, you can have a man, you can say, okay, I want a man who is compassionate. Okay. But then if he's not, if, if he's not compassionate about the topic that you want him to be compassionate about, now he's incompassionate when he could have been, compassionate but he doesn't see the value in that compassion in that particular situation that doesn't mean that he's not compassionate he could be compassionate too so let me give a direct example one way it could be okay he likes to go and serve the homeless every weekend giving them food money and etc but a waitress who's getting paid for her job messes up his food and he says look i don't want this food anymore i'm not tipping her Yes, this is a very, very broad example, but it still could be compassion. One could see compassion to say, well, it's not her fault. It's the cook's fault. She didn't mess up the food. She just got it at the time frame that she got it. Is he not compassionate because he doesn't want to tip the waiter, waitress or the waiter? No, he's still compassionate. It just doesn't fit your narrative. That's controlling. He's still compassionate. He's just not in the way in which you want it in that particular situation. That's controlling him and wanting him to do it your way because you see the value there, not because he's not compassionate. Okay. So, okay. I, and I, and I, and through that example <laughs> that you just gave, I completely get it and I completely understand. My I, question is ridiculous. My question is is it controlling when men do the same thing? Okay. I could say yes. So, in, okay. in, in the regards of a man, I can point the I can point the situation to be um, a man wanting his woman to clean up all the fucking time after him, right? <sighs> just say, oh, I see the I see the fucking side. I'm just saying, let's just say, because I hear a lot of guys talking about cleaning. We're using that example, cleaning. So she takes the time to clean the house twice a week. Throughout the week, but he would have. But for him, his standard, his standard is that he wants her to clean every day. Pick something every day to clean. Is it that I would say that that is controlling? Because if there's an effective way and the house is clean, the end result is clean. It's, it doesn't matter how often the person do it. It matters that it's getting done. That's where the control. Well, comes that from. goes to what? What's your definition of clean? Yeah. I mean, obviously. Ugh that you're talking about. I it's said, so we can go into definitions. If his definition is that he want everything spotless, well, then you know you know your man and you, you shouldn't have picked that man. Well, no, but, but why is that the case? Because isn't that then just his expectation? And his expectation of wanting things spotless is him trying to control how I clean. So if it's spotless and it stays spotless, then that's the issue. But you're just, you're just, you just change the measuring stick, literally. No, I did I, I literally just said what you said earlier. Is this I literally just said, no, no. I literally said what you said earlier. You uh -huh. said earlier, if your expectation is one thing and it shows up in a different way, then you're trying to control the person because it's not that it didn't show up. It just didn't show up the way you expected it to. So okay. this leads back to what we said earlier in the conversation where we said it's okay for men to do and say things Oh. to control or change the narrative for women, but when women do it, it's a problem. No, I'm not changing that at all. Not at all. I am literally saying that so if the house is spotless and you did it at your time or your way of doing it... Well, but here's the thing. We already talked about your expectation of spotless and mine are different. Okay. All right, so, 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 so let's, 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 let's take that right there. Having a, a, a clarifying conversation in good faith. Let's put all the you're trying to control me aside or I'm trying to control you aside. What is the goal that we're trying to get to? 
because if you can agree on the goal, then you can then you can formulate a pathway to get there. Mm -hmm. I mean, God damn, it is not that hard. <laughs> it is not that hard. Y'all right? got the rev cussing on it. <laughs> let's 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 get back to what the goal is. The whole you but, do it, there you know, is, this way or that way. It is, it is, therein lies the issue, right? Therein lies the issue is that we we lose sight of the goal because we're so worried about our own autonomy, as we talked about earlier, the word autonomy, right? We're so worried about, I don't want to be controlled. I don't want to be chained. I'm not doing this. And so now we don't even know what the damn goal is. And like you said, if the goal was just, let's make sure the house is clean. Now we haven't spoken in, in, in three days because we can't agree on what clean is. Like, but this is the real shit that's happening in our relationships. Which, which is why I get back to my whole underlying point is the good faith. Are we a team and are we working together or are we trying to establish dominance? And there's, and, and the whole dominance versus submission thing, there's, there's a dance there because no one gender or party is inherently always dominant and, no, and the other party is not always inherently submissive. You look and assess what each one of your strengths are. And then based on what your strengths are, those will be the areas that you should take the lead in with the goal being accomplishing whatever it is that you're trying to get done. Anything else on, on top of that is ego. It is hubris. It is, and that is going to be the death of your relationship. Because if you can spend two days being mad at each other over the definition of the word clean, then you've just, you have, uh, uh, you've wasted time that, that could have been used towards benefiting, you know, your relationship in other type, some other type of way. So let's, let's get beyond this whole, uh, the whole combativeness behind relationships there's okay. it's we are interdependent here yeah i don't need to dominate you you don't need to try to dominate me i don't have to prove to you that i'm this and you don't have to prove to me that you're that let's do what we have to do to uh, achieve and accomplish the mission okay a where's will says even if you speak to dominance a good leader knows when and how to lead which may include following when it's best to follow a good leader can communicate effectively enough to keep the team on track and in harmony. Absolutely. That's, that's facts because it's about mm -hmm. getting to the goal. Oh, Lord. You know, no, no, no man or woman left behind. Correct. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't be a team when it's only you. I can't be a team it says, when it's only me. A whereas, a whereas Will says lead the domination to kink. Hey! Boom! Oh, How about that? How too. about that? <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about hey, domination and submission? Then, then yeah, let's let's that, that, that's a kink <laughs> conversation. <laughs> and, and there's a there's a difference between kink and collaboration. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, that part. <laughs> but hey, but is but that kind of makes you think if domination is your kink, right? The, can that spill over into the actual relationship where there's that that issue of? I, I, I need to be dominant. If you have that conversation and make that agreement, but if mm -hmm. all you're dealing is dealing with is assumptions and this is how it should be because this is how I want it to be, then no, then you're absolutely wrong. And that I would uh, assert is not what it uh, uh, is is antithetical to being a good dom. Mm. It can definitely spill over if there's an agreement. So here's what I want. Here's what I want to say. I want to say that there's somebody for everybody, right? So clearly, uh, Kima and Red Pill would probably not work well in a relationship together, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just That's say that. You know what I mean? Mean? Let's just say that. But there is somebody. You know what I mean? There are, is somebody for everybody. Some people, you know what I mean, are okay with more dominance or more assertiveness. Some people need, you know, what what the Rev has. They need you to. You got to talk to me soft. Talk to me nice and don't talk to me at all, right? And so, and it's okay for you to be whoever you are. The, the ultimate thing is to understand what it is that you want and you need. 
and, and stop engaging yourself with people who don't give you what you want and what you need and who don't fit your criteria. Yeah. So it's, often, it's great to say no. Because we settle. <laughs> Nothing wrong with saying no. You know, there's 7 billion people on the planet and all of them don't have to like you. It's okay. Find yeah, somebody right, who does. Right. You don't have, it just didn't work. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> it just or maybe we just have fire sex and that's all we do right now. Like like I feel like often and again, is that society, is that what we do to each other? Where we put each other in these boxes and we like, okay, this is what we gotta be. We gotta figure this out, we gotta work this out. Like maybe y'all just fucking. Like if that's where you are, that's where you are. Yeah, I mean, be be all, be okay with it. You know, this there's, there's there's a there's a power behind acceptance. Mm -hmm. When I can accept that you are who you are, and then I decide whether or not I want to deal with you or not, that is That's so peaceful. That's it right there. Mm -hmm. That's it right there. You have to, at some point, you have to look yourself in the mirror. And you have to say to yourself, I got in this thing, right? Nobody twisted my arm. Nobody forced me. I saw the signs early on. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And with you, myself. <laughs> so, yeah. so then my question would be, like, where's the the homogenousness among self? Like, and I'm asking that in the sense of if most most black people out here talk about okay, building a strong black community. <sighs> and so, if you're if you're talking about building a strong black, community, it doesn't come from okay, we just fucking, that doesn't come from, okay, we're just talking or we're just dating. That doesn't really come from those those apparatuses. So then if you're not being homogenous in that, in your your thinking or your mindsets or your, your whatever you want to call it, I can't find the word right now. But if you're not homogenous in yourself and the expectations that you have, then what is the... What, what what do we do? It's just a cognitive dissonance and we just live with the cognitive dissonance or is it called out? What do you, like, what do well, we do? Well, uh, again, you, you can't have a, a, a healed community and a strong community if you don't have a, a healed and strong individual. So mm -hmm. you that is going to be a function of you of you doing your, your own personal work on yourself. Your work. And then, and then you take your healed self into a community and you align yourself with another person who is healed and y'all form agreements upon which to build a, a family or whatever dynamic. And then you begin to surround yourself with people who have similar uh, mindsets or dispositions that you can work with. And that's how you get to community, common unity. But it starts with unity. So and you can't be unified with anybody else unless you're unified in yourself. And that's... So then so then clarify for me, Rev. I hear you. So based on that statement, you're talking about, okay, healing. You have to get your healing and get someone else that is healed as well. That sounds like a benchmark. So then when, at what point is healing ever done? Well, there's, there's no finish mark to healing, but, but what, what there is, do, but what there is, is if I am actively involved in becoming a better version of myself, then that means that I form boundaries that that guide how I interact with the, uh, with the world, and 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 then as I am interacting with the world, as I intersect with other people who have similar points of view and similar mindsets, then now that come there there is an opportunity for something to be built there at that intersection. And oh, then so as these two people begin to do what they need to do and they grow their, their relationship and dynamic, then they'll intersect with uh, other people who, who, who they have those, those uh, similar commonalities with. That's, that's, that's all it is. But it all starts with, with, with yourself. You, mm -hmm. None of us are the, are the benchmark of having completely healed because we're always living. We're always evolving. But what you can do is decide, this is what I will allow in my life, and this is what I will not allow in my life. And when, right. you, can, when, you, when you can do that, then it becomes a whole lot easier to sort people into their proper place in your life. And not everybody that comes across your path is someone is that's supposed to be in your life for especially not for an extended period of time so use your no 
so you so, so, so I I can agree. However, if I take the two statements that you just made and put them two together, they don't stand together. They they're separated. Those two statements you said, okay, you need to to build a hope to build a community. You need a healed person who's he done their work and then they get together with another healed person who's done their work and they build a community from that's strong because that community has done their work. And but then you say to me that the work is never done and you're going to constantly be doing the work and it's okay not to intersect with people because everybody that you intersect with is not going to be a person that is that is on the same level on the same path. I can completely Sorry. agree with you. two thoughts aren't together. Those two thoughts are literally one side for one side and the other side for the other no, side. Now, no, I, brother, I, brother, brother, here's brother. where those two statements I'll intersect. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. I didn't stop. I didn't stop you. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't stop you. So I understand where you're coming from. I personally, if I was verbalizing that or if I was, if I was trying to speak on that, I would say you have to find somebody that matches your crazy because nobody has ever done healing. Nobody has ever done their healing work. What you just said, I agree with the statement. No one has ever done healing. Life keeps happening. Yeah, Thank he has done his healing work. You can tell from the way he speaks, he's done his healing work. Healing work is he's ongoing. He's done his healing work because you, because he likes like talking it's to you. It's ongoing work. Because, he, because my healing work has been done. I'm just aggressive. I'm from a space where aggressive is okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to shorten myself or try to change it because of how you react to it. And, I mean, you're acting like a teenage child right now, but I mean, that's okay too. Is that you? Hold on. That's, hold on. Hold that, that's that's on. that's that's that's, 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 that's not necessary. Come on, come on. Wait, let's 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 stay in good faith. Let's stay in good listen, faith here. Listen, so listen, the reactions listen. are okay too. Listen, so, so, listen. Let's stay in good faith. Come on. Man. Pause. Pause. Let me be clear. This is Miss Hot Topic Show. Miss Hot Topic. On Miss Hot Topic Show, we don't throw slander and we don't call names let's not go there okay so then, i can agree so then i can act like this and do all this <laughs> that's okay i can do it because it's my show i didn't say you couldn't but then okay so you then just it's, said okay. it's not okay okay I it's asked, is it okay it's her show she's the she's the proctor of it i can ask a question to the proctor if if, if the gestures are okay which is passive aggressive but the slander is first of all pause you know me well enough to know there's nothing passive aggressive about me. I didn't no, say I have something you. to say. I didn't I say, say. He was calling said, me passive aggressive, not you. Oh, okay. I asked the question. <laughs> I asked the question, and <laughs> the fact is, is that one is aggressive is just in a passive way. One is aggressive, and it's just in a direct way. It's still aggressive. So, so okay. let's 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 if we can, can we bring it back to? The the the, um, the, 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 premise, the point that you were trying to make about my statements, you were saying that they that they were contradictory or they were not homogenous, and 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 I would retort that by saying that as you are doing your work to become a better iteration, a better version of yourself, the healing work, you are going to develop boundaries, things that you say yes, I will allow in my life and things that I will not. And as you are doing that, you are inevitably going to interact with other people who are at various stages of doing that work, whether they are actively doing it or whether they are ignoring it that it even needs to be done. And when you intersect with those people, you now have a choice. Is this someone that I want to continue to allow in my space? Or, is the, or are they not? Is this a person that I am going to allow to affect or impact me? Or are they not? Mm -hmm. And if they are, then you will continue to move forward with them based on what you have, um, based on, on, on the agreements that you make. Those agreements can always be renegotiated as you continue to do your work. So whether or not you're saying it's because it's finding someone who can deal with my level of crazy or whether it's someone who has done their who is uh, doing their work? You're, it, it's two sides of the same coin. It's just how are you choosing to to orient your orient yourself towards it? But we are. But everyone is is in the process of becoming something. Yeah, you're either becoming all, better or you're becoming we're worse. All, we're worse. all forever all right. going to be a work in progress. I exactly. Perfect, perfection. I completely agree. So then, my question was that originally this whole topic was. 
the black people, black people tend to ask the question or say, I'm sorry, not ask the question. Black people tend to make the assertion that we need to build strong black communities. So if you need to build strong black communities, my question again is, if you're dealing with people on such a finite or surface level, how are you building that community? His response to me was that it was supposed to be that you have two healed people basically coming together to build strong community. Right? Was that not your answer to me? That that wasn't his answer. He kind of said he disagreed. He one disagreed. Healed. Listen, listen. My, he, just I'm, disagreed. I'm he just agreed. So let are, him are, are you are you asking me? Because I yes, was I'm some asking comments. you. Your answer to me was that it takes you being a healed person and then basically getting with another hill person, and that builds a strong community because in community, it's a common unity. That was what you said, correct? That was, that was in essence, a portion of what I said. He I mean, said he it's, ob it's obviously not the totality of what I said, but those were words that I did state, yes. <laughs> so the totality of what you said is the other part that you brought back in, which is the healing, because that was two parts, and then we got the third part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like you, if you... if if you are looking for a blueprint, then my assertion would be that the blueprint is to work on becoming a healed person, which means identifying and dealing with your own personal traumas, understanding that you've got them, you've got everyone's got their own issues, mm -hmm. and making a conscious decision to address those in such a way that they do not dictate your destiny. And as you are doing that, you are inevitably going to intersect with other people who are at varying stages of doing that same work, whether it is active or whether it is inactive. And when you intersect with those people, you get to decide if that is someone that you choose to continue to interact with. I agree. And it's through those interactions and the deepening of those connections or the walking away from those interactions that gives you the foundation upon which to build a healthy relationship. And through the continuous process of healthy relationships being formed, you can then get to the place of building healthy community. So then... So okay. Then I, Let me pa pause, pause, pause. We are going to seem like we can go around and around and around <laughs> and around <laughs> for hours about this. However... My show is official, and I'm on the radio, and my time is almost up. <laughs> <laughs> you send it, you gonna get so, syndicated, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so we gonna get syndicated. So get uh, my my time is almost up. I love you all. You're all my hotties. I told you you're my hotties. That's what I'm calling y'all. You're my hotties because I'm this hot topic. Um, and I will be back next Tuesday. If you would like, we can pick this back up. For the start of the show next Tuesday, we're not going to spend a whole two hours next Tuesday on this shit again. <laughs> but we will pick it back up. I'll give y'all a good half hour. <laughs> y'all come back next Tuesday. I'm going to be I'll back. I'll give y'all a good half hour. I had so we can... everything. I looked huh? at 917. I said, I'm going to be back next Tuesday. So I'm in my head and everything. My head that's on my neck. Come on. Come seven, on. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> I know it's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You love the show. Thank you so much, Kima. So I love y'all so much. I'm so glad y'all here. I'm glad y'all interacted. And you know what? These conversations are needed, you know, amongst us, right? We're not going to always agree. We're not going to always feel the exact same way. But I think that's a good thing. Because to have people in your life where everybody just feels the same way you do, you kind of never really get to see the other side of the coin. You don't get to have this discord. You don't get to hash things out. So I'm I, even though we seem to disagree on some things, and, and sometimes you know it got a little off track. I think it's a good thing, and that's what I'm all about. I'm all about controversy, and let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk let's about. It. So I will see you guys next Tuesday. If you do not already follow me on Instagram, um, I'm Miss at Miss Hot Topic. I'm on TikTok. Um, Miss Hot Topic, Facebook, Miss Hot Topic. I try to keep the same name everywhere. So you guys follow me and make sure that you come back next Tuesday at uh, 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Um, Eastern Time. Y'all got to go to work in the morning anyway, so we can't be on here all night shooting the shit anyway. 
Uh, yes, Kima, Kevin started this. But you know what? Like I said, <laughs> I think that Kevin does this for this reason. I think that Kevin Samuel says some things for this reason, just to start some shit, just to get some conversation going, just to get us to, you know what I mean? This is expanding our thoughts and our minds. Some of the things that were said tonight were things that I was like, well, I never thought about that. So hopefully when you leave the show, you leave thinking, I never thought about that. Or you give some things some more thought and you come back next week with some more ammunition, sound like. Come back here. Come back here. Give us the healing. Come back heal. <laughs> start, start your healing journey. You know what I mean? Try to figure out what your expectations are. You know what I mean? You leave here with an action item. You know what I mean? Maybe you left here and you decided I might be controlling shit. But you know what I mean? Hopefully, That's when the you leave the show. Yeah. Hopefully, when you leave the show, it allows you to at least give some thought to something that you hadn't thought about before you got here. So I love y'all so much. I thank y'all so much for your support. Tell a friend and tell their friends and tell their friends. And all of y'all come back next Tuesday. Thank you guys for getting in the box and joining me, not being afraid. We know that Red Pill is never afraid to say what he got to say anyway. <laughs> or not afraid to say what she got to say either. Okay, okay. Cause we listen, good. Because listen. <laughs> But I definitely appreciate the men because the women almost always, you know, are not afraid to say what they have to say. But I really appreciate men being willing to come out and talk and speak with us because y'all seem to be so hard to get y'all to join and talk. So I really appreciate you fellas for jumping in there and doing the damn thing. Y'all, do y'all promise to come back next Tuesday? I, I, I can do that. I can do that. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you guys next Tuesday. I love you. Make it a great week. Bye, my hotties. Bye, hotties. <laughs>